bài mà chúng ta sẽ cùng học với nhau sáng hôm nay là xây dựng nhau trong tình yêu thương. Trong Corinto, We uh, together will study the theme of build each other up in love. Let us look at the word of God. In 1 Corinthians 14, 26-40, What then, brothers, when you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. If any speak in a tongue, let there be only two, or at most three, and each in turn, and let someone interpret. But if there is no one to interpret, let each of them keep silent in church and speak to himself and to God. Let two or three prophets speak, and let the others weigh what is said. If a revelation is made to another sitting there, let the first be silent. For you can all prophesy one by one, so that all may learn and all be encouraged. And the spirits of prophets are subject to prophets. For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. As in all the churches of the saints, the women should keep silence in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but should be in submission, as the law also says. If there is anything they desire to learn, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is shameful for a woman to speak in church. Or was it from you that the word of God came? Or are you the only one it has reached? If anyone thinks that he is a prophet or a spiritual, he should acknowledge that the things I am writing to you are a command of the Lord. If anyone does not recognize this, he is not recognized. So, my brothers, earnestly desire to prophesy, and do not forbid speaking in tongues. But all things should be done decently and in order. Our Heavenly Father, please lead us into the truth of your word. Holy Spirit, rule through our hearts, in our hearts, so that we can hear your words gently speak into our hearts. Rule through this time, Lord, so that my words and our meditations of our heart be pleasing to you. And Lord, give us power and your life to and guidance so that we can live according to your word. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. We see that this passage starts with the point of what then, brothers, in 1 Corinthians 14, 26. That is, we have learned of the motivation of love and the spiritual gift of the Holy Spirit. So how now can we edify one another, build each other up in following Christ? What shall we do? Paul continues, he says, When you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. When you gather together, and when we gather together, there are um, cell groups that we have, fellowship groups. And when we gather together, look at my text. Look at my text. When we gather together, we, sorry, when we gather together, we have a hymn or a lesson or a revelation or a tongue or whatever it is that we have for one another, we will together use those things so that everybody will be edified or built up. So whenever we gather together, ask the Lord, Lord, give me something so that I can share with my brothers and sisters. And God can use us to bring God's blessings to others, a joy, a living word, or a word of encouragement, all that, all that to edify one another, to help each other grow in the Lord. This is not just worship and worship only, but any time that we gather together, whenever you come together, maybe at dinner or maybe when we go and uh, hang out with one another, use all those opportunities to build each other up. This morning, I will try to use God's principle in the relationships uh, that we have in the fellowship group, in the youth group fellowship, in the young couples fellowship 
especially I want to emphasize on youth group. And I will especially focus on the young people. But this principle is used for anyone who has wisdom and understanding from the Lord. In a meeting, a youth group meeting, a one friend um, gave a, uh, an issue, raised an issue, and wanted the uh, advice from the from the fellow Christians. So, do we want to have um, advice from our brothers and sisters in Christ? So, how how can we have good advice for our brother and sisters in Christ? How can we build up and encourage those who have needs? How can we have encouraging words for our brothers and sisters and our friends? If there is a friend who goes on Facebook and asks a question about faith, how do you know that the Bible is God's word? Or how do you know that God exists? Then how can we find the answer so that we can help our friend? Or maybe someone asked a friend to go to eat um, dinner or to share about the difficulties he's having at home with parents or school issues or a boyfriend girlfriend problems and ask your advice what will you say to help your your friend and to encourage and advise him the first thing that we need is the love of god don't think that you have love because love doesn't come from us love comes from god who is the source of love so we need to immerse ourselves in god's love and then because of the motivation of love we help our brothers and sisters and secondly help us ask god to give us his word and his spiritual gifts so that we can help our friends and then try to um, do some research studying uh, the bible and books and all that so that we have good advice for our friend if you know that our understanding is limited, that our wisdom is also lacking, then what would you do? We would go to God, right? God says that whoever lacks wisdom, come to Him and He will give generously. So ask the Lord that God will give us the spiritual gift to have words of wisdom, words of encouragement, words of prophecy to help our friends. And we have learned in 1 Corinthians 12, uh, I mean, 1 Corinthians 14, 1 to 25, we studied about the spiritual gifts that God has given to us so that we can help our brothers and sisters to grow in the Lord, to stand firm in the faith, and to hold steadfast in the faith with, of God, in God. And so we see that love is the greatest motivation for us to serve. And we've heard these passages, it seems to be repetitive, repeating about speaking in tongues, speaking in prophecy. Maybe young friends and everyone think that this is so far-fetched because we don't speak in tongues or in prophecy. But the important thing here is to speak the Word of God. To speak prophecy is to speak the Word of God. And the same thing with speaking in tongues. So this does directly affect us. and. Um, is important to us because we speak God's word. And the word of God in verse 26 says that do all to build up one another. Do all so that the church will be built up. That is the last part of verse 26. We do everything to help and edify your children and your and young people, right? Uh, parents, grandparents, you, you share whatever you can to help your children and grandchildren to grow, right? So the same way, we help our brothers and sisters. For building the church is not the job only of the pastor or of the board members, but building up the church is the responsibility of each person in the church. When we gather together, we have a hymn or word of exhortation so that each will be built. So this is uh, the uh, responsibility of each one of us. So when we gather like this, we have uh, we don't have the opportunity to share really. But in Bible study, when we have fellowship groups, God will give us something to share, and yet we don't share. Wow! If we have something, we need to share it, right? But 
there are others who just don't receive it from the Lord and they tell a lot. So those who speak too much, you know, uh, do less. And those who have the Word of God share more. So before we speak, right, people say that, oh, you have to roll your tongue seven times. But no, we need to say that before we speak, we need to ask God, God, what do you want us to say? What do you want me to say? So in any fellowship groups, we need to have um, like a, a, a time of sharing so that all will have an opportunity to share and to be built up in Christ. And we, how do we build up each other? There are four points that I'd like to share with you here. First of all, we need to share the Word of God in an easy to understand way. So young people, present God's Word in an easy to understand way. Parents, share the Word of God to your children in a way that your children will understand. One time, a young woman came to me and, and said, when I do something wrong, my father would just yell at me. And he would yell at me in really loud and in Vietnamese, and I don't even understand what he's saying. And so when he, she came to here uh, in the church, we have the translation system in the ear. And so the parents wanted that child to come to church to listen to Vietnamese, to um, learn Vietnamese. And so we asked, uh, so how much in Vietnamese would you understand? And she would say 20%. And so why? You know, we need to speak in an easy to understand way for the person to benefit from. If I was to share with you about economics or something like that, how can I say those words to a young kid and understand? So I would say to a young kid, if you have $5 and you give to God $4, how much do you have left? So we need to share just like that with God's Word. We need to use words that are easy to understand. There are Bibles for young people, for the, uh, children, young children. Buy, uh, parents, buy those Bibles that are easy to understand words for, for young children so that they can understand. The principle here is that when we share anything in a Bible study or a fellowship group, we need to share in a way that people, the audience, will be able to understand. Just as last week when I talked about speaking in prophecy, and I say that prophecy is when God speaks to us through a person. And I thought that was uh, enough to understand. But someone told me, a pastor explained what it means to speak in prophecy. I'm sorry, but because of time is, does not permit, I cannot say everything about speaking prophecy. To prophesy has two parts. First of all, to proclaim the Word of God. And the second uh, part of prophecy is foretelling. F-O-R-T-H, forth telling. And the other is F-O-R-E telling. Foretelling, forth telling. So usually when we read the Bible, the books of the prophets, such as in Isaiah, Isaiah, talks about the will of God, but also a part of it talks about what's to come. So it's not the whole, the book of prophets um, talk about the future. To proclaim the word of God is to prophesy. So also to um, speak about future events is also to prophesy. So we need to share in a way that people will understand. And secondly, uh, keep quiet if we have nothing good to say. Keep silence if you have nothing good to say. Parents, keep silent and pray for your children if you have nothing good to say. If we keep yelling, then it goes through one ear and out the other ear. They will not hear. So where there are times when it, there are teaching moments. When it's worth speaking, then speak. If you keep saying it, then you only hear it and they don't hear it. It's just like water pouring on a roof. Just keep on going. So parents, you need to keep silence if you have nothing good to say. And young friends, you know, you don't have to give advice all the time. Sometimes you have advice, sometimes you don't. So it's best to come to the Lord. So the Bible says that we do good deeds when we share words that are respectful and of wisdom to share. In Proverbs 10, 32, 
uh, 31 to 32, the mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue will be cut off. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked what is perverse. So Proverbs 16, 23, the heart of the wise makes his speech judicious and adds persuasiveness to his lips. Ephesians 4.29, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as it fits the cohesion, that it may give grace to those who hear. So, of course, we don't want to speak out corruptible talk, corrupting talk. Some people just speak out, and it just really is bitter words. So, you know, we have to see when it's worth talking, we need to speak things that will build up our friends. Sometimes we need to keep our mouth shut so that we do not speak up corrupting talk. And 1 Corinthians also tell us in verse 28, But if there is no one to interpret, let each of them keep silent in church and speak to himself and to God. This is in 1 Corinthians 13, 28. That is, if you speak up and somebody might misunderstand you or they don't understand, then don't speak. Keep silent. If there's no interpreter, uh, we need to keep silent. Sometimes we speak Vietnamese and we need an interpreter because people don't understand. Um, just uh, past, this two past, weeks past, in one of the uh, examination for being a, a pastor in one of the meetings, and uh, the the candidate was saying, when can the Holy Spirit be born? And then I didn't understand, so I tried to uh, explain to him that the Holy Spirit doesn't go out. It's like the uh, a pregnant woman. Uh, the baby has to come out, but the Holy Spirit is always in us. Ne the Spirit never leaves us. So we need to say how that people will understand. If there's no interpreter, then we need to keep silent. If we have nothing good to say, then it's best to keep silent. In Proverbs 4, 7, a time to keep silence. There's a time to speak and a time to keep silent. Sometimes we can accomplish much more by not speaking. We can avoid um, controversies and pain in our friends when we are silent rather than, than giving advice that is lacking in wisdom. Uh, someone in the young couples group say, I'm tired of my husband. Uh, he doesn't care, take care of anything at home, his children or anything. And then another friend say, you know what, just go ahead and divorce and find another man. How can we say that? That's advice that is lacking wisdom. When we are giving advice that causes all those discourse, we need to pause and think about our thinking and our words. And sometimes it's best to be silent. Sometimes we can't say any good word to build up and encourage our friend, but all the time we can always build each other up by praying for our friend. A.B. Simpson shared about a very old um, farmer, and he there was a, a rock uh, area in his field, and he had broken like three blades of his his um, his lawnmower. And every time he hit that rock area, he was so sick and tired of it. And one day, he took a very big um, what is that called? Like a not an axe, but a shovel. And he tried to shove it up. And he he tried it, and then he's like, oh, it's so easy for him to lift it up. So then he just took it, and then. Uh, removed it. He did not know that it was that easy. So prayer is like that. Not everything is solved in an easy way like that rock. But we can know that some, that many things, all things can be resolved by prayer. We might not have very wise advice for our friend, but we can pray for our friend. And then we need to make sure that our advice is in line with God's word. Parents, use the Word of God to teach your children. 
don't use your words of wisdom or your, your reasoning, but bring God's word to your children. The word of God teaches you this way, that way, and say it in an easy way to understand, so that they can、um, honor God. And young people, protect your words, so that it is in line with God's word when you give advice to your friends. In Verse First Corinthians thirteen twenty nine. Let two or three prophets speak, and let the others weigh what is said. We are to weigh to see what if it's according to God's word, if it's in line with God's word. When Paul went to Berea and preached, and those people in Berea every day they would examine the words of Paul and to search the Scripture to see if it goes line in line. So the same way when. There are people who give you advice. We need to see if that advice is according to God's word. If there's anyone in the group that has a need to be resolved, then other friends <coughs> lean on God's word to、uh, give advice. Children, or parents, when children come to get, ask your advice, base it on God's word to advise them. And so, when an advice is given in a group, we need to examine and see if those words of advice are in line with God's word. So we need to test for true word from the Lord. If you ask an advice of another person, though it, it, it be an advice of a friend or of a parent or an an older adult, then we need to test to see if those. Words are according to God's word or not. Please write down these、uh, points and these Bible verses. This is the this is the time that you can take out your phone just to record, not to look at Facebook or Instagram or anything like that. To write down these verses. First of all, does it glorify God? Test for true word from the Lord. Number one, does it glorify God? In John sixteen fourteen, does the advice that we give glorify the Lord? If it comes from the Holy Spirit, it will glorify the Lord. In John sixteen fourteen, He will glorify me. Here, the Holy Spirit will glorify me, for He will take what is mine and declare it to you. So, God proclaims His word. And secondly, does Those word of advice build up others in Christ. The Apostle Paul emphasizes this seven times in First Corinthians fourteen. In First Corinthians fourteen twenty-six, what then, brothers, when you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. And thirdly, are those words in line with God's word? If we、uh, distort the word of God. To benefit ourselves, then that is not in line with God's word. Sometimes we are so、um, at end at 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 the end of something, and we try to fix God's word so that say that's that's the correct way. No, in Second Peter three sixteen, that the letters of Paul, there are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction, as they do the other scriptures. That is, they twist the Bible. They twist the、uh, the Word of God to、uh, go in line with their own will, and then we have to see if those words are spoken out of love. This is a sign to distinguish if that person has the Spirit of God in them or not. If that person submits to the Spirit of God, even in correcting us, then we will、uh, be able to feel that person's love. Or acknowledge their love. First Corinthians thirteen thirteen. So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. So when it is spoken out of love, then that those words are worth listening to. And then is Jesus Lord of the speaker? The ones that are giving advice to us in our family matters or in our career choices. Does that person have the Lord Jesus? In Matthew seven fifteen twenty seven fifteen to sixteen, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ra ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. There are some people who go on the internet and they say that they proclaim they are pastors, and then they speak prophecy、uh, of a, of the future, and we need to discern that they are false. So we need to. The Bible says what that we are to stone those people, right? 
So we need to be careful. If a pastor stands up there and says, I proclaim that God will heal you, and then that person passes away. Anybody can proclaim that they are, an, uh, they are a pastor. Anybody can be on the internet. So we need to be careful. We need to be cautious and beware of false prophets. And sixthly, does the speaker submit to the church leaders? There are some who are very strong will, and they can talk really well and loudly and and make everybody listen to them. Parents, we do that. We say. When I listen, when I speak, you listen. Parents say that no, the speaker must have the responsibility to represent God to speak. That is, we need to speak as God speaks. God doesn't do that. God doesn't say talk down to us like that. He speaks to us very respectfully. In Acts twenty nine twenty nine to thirty, I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things, to draw away the disciples after them. There are some who speak, and they are not speaking according to the Bible. So we need to be careful. And then, does the speaker allow others to judge the statement? That is when you speak it, and speak in authority. No, when you speak, the speaker speak. Uh, the other, the listener has a right to uh, think about it, right? So, you know, like parents say, "Hey, uh, we we make eighty thousand dollars, but you know what? When you apply for college, put it little so that you get scholarship." No, you can't just listen to the authority like that and and obey. We need to listen according to God's word. And the one who speaks must be humble enough to give the listener an opportunity to to examine the words. Paul, when he spoke to the Berean church, he allowed them to examine and test his words to be biblical or not. He didn't say, "I am the apostle, apostle of God. You must listen to me." No, he allowed the listeners to examine the words to see if it goes line in line, in line with God's word. And First Corinthians fourteen twenty nine, let two or three prophets speak, and let the others weigh what is said. And then, when you speak, is the speaker in control of himself when speaking, or that person is just speaking and doesn't know what he's saying? The one who is demon possessed, he speaks and he does not know what he's saying. The one who is drunk, he speaks and he has no idea what he's saying. He can is not in control. But the one who is controlled by the spirit. Knows what is spoken. First Corinthians fourteen thirty two. And the spirits of prophets are subject to prophets. That is, they know that it comes from God. And then ninth, is the prophecy fulfilled? If it speaks about some future event, majority of prophecy is to proclaim God's word, not to foretell. So we are foretelling. Speaking God's word is different from foretelling, which is telling, speaking about the future. Deuteronomy eighteen twenty one to twenty two. And if you say in your heart, "How may we know the word that the Lord has not spoken?" When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the word does not come to pass or come true, that is a word that the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You need not be afraid of him. Another place says that bring that person out and stone him. And then, fourthly, we help our brothers just by by doing what? By presenting God's word orderly. Share the word of God to your friends in an orderly way. Don't speak without a, a beginning and an end. In First Corinthians fourteen thirty. If a revelation is made to another sitting there, let the first be silent, for you can all prophesy one by one, so that all may learn and all be encouraged. And the spirits of prophets are subject to prophets, for God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. For God is a God of peace. Imagine a young kid wearing a shirt and. He buttoned the first hole to the second button, and then what happens eventually? The shirt will be lopsided, right? 
So the same way God wants us to have order, everyone can have advice to resolve the needs of a person, but and everybody would probably try to um, share their advice, but we need to have order. And we do it all to build each other up. <coughs> and we need to speak at the right time and place. In 1 Corinthians 14, 33 to 36, as in all the hmm, churches, the woman could not speak. If there is anything they desire to learn, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is shameful for a woman to speak in church. Or was it from you that the word of God came? Or are you the only one it has reached? Here, it says that women are to keep silence in the church. does not mean that woman, you cannot speak at all. No, because in another place, it says that woman, when you speak prophesy, then we need to speak out God's word, right? Or woman, when you pray, then we, we do, right? So there has to be a sign of authority on us, right? But the thing is, like in Vietnam, they sit, not like here in Vietnam, you know, the the, wom the men sit on one side, the women sit on the other side. And in the temples of the Jews, um, there's a square, and it goes down, indented in the middle. And then the men sit on one side, the women sit on the other side. And when the women were wondering what the men are saying, and they would say, and they would be so out of order, yelling out, hey, what you saying over there, man? And so it was not orderly. And so here it says, whatever you want to know, go home and ask your husband. Don't just sit over here and yell out like that. So when the women have anything, then go home and ask the husbands. Words spoken at the right time is in Proverbs 25, 11. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. Hmm. So that when we, um, you know, we don't have to, uh, we don't have to speak it in a group either if we don't want to shame that person. There are times when we need to say it in a quiet way, personally, with that person. In the Bible, the right time is very important. We are to speak uh, in the right time. Proverbs 25, 11, a word fitly spoken. That means it's a teaching moment, the right time. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. So there are teaching moments that our children will listen. Other times when we say it, they don't want to listen. It's, it doesn't go anywhere. So same thing, friends. Find the right time to say things. It's hard, yes, to know when is the right timing. But the Holy Spirit will help us to know when is the right timing. He will let us know when is the right opportunity, the right time to edify or build up another. So let's pray to the Lord. First of all, we praise the Lord and thank the Lord that He uses other people to have fitly spoken words for us. And so now we pray that God will give us uh, words that will be fitly spoken at the right time to help others. And then thirdly, is to submit under God's authority. We do all things for God's glory uh, and others be built up. And then secondly, we say at the right time, the right place. And thirdly, we need to submit under God's authority. In uh, verse 37, if anyone thinks that he is a prophet or spiritual, he should acknowledge that the things I am writing to you are a command of the Lord. Paul didn't say, this is my advice, you should do this. No, he said, this is the command of God. If anyone does not recognize this, he is not recognized. I was going to ask you, where in the Bible does it say that you are not to care for another person or recognize another person? If I ask that, you know that in 1 Corinthians 14, 38 here, if anyone does not recognize God's word, then don't recognize him. In verse 39, So my brothers, earnestly desire to prophesy, and do not forbid speaking in tongues. So desire that. Earnestly desire to speak God's word. 
Wherever God speaks to us, we need to share with our brothers and sisters. May the Lord give us that spiritual gift. But all things should be done decently and in order. If you have wisdom from the Lord, then friends, you know that this is the command of the Lord. These are principles that the Lord teaches us in how we are to use His Word. Friends, you will be happy and joyful when you submit to the Word of God and obey Him. If you want to have words of wisdom as advice for your friends, would you like that? Come to the Word of God, seek Him, and He will give to you. If you truly want, then first of all, pursue love. Pursue love, the love of God. For when you have the love of God, then everything you do and every word you say will have value, and you will have value, and what you accomplish will have value. And secondly, desire the spiritual gift of prophecy so that you can speak forth the nature of God, the work of the Lord, the will of the Lord for your friends. This is the question that we often ask each other. Every time we study the Bible, when through this lesson, what have you learned about the glory of God and about His nature and His work and His will? So how? What for? So that we can apply God's word in our lives, so that we can edify and build each other up. So when you eat, you have to have metabolism, right? It needs to be metabolized. So when we study the Word of God, to truly know God and experience Him. In the uh, research uh, of reading, a uh, reading research in Iowa University, they did a survey, and there was a student, a ninth grade student. He was Asian, and he came to Iowa to study. He studied English there, and in the class, there was a, a writing assignment. You had to read a newspaper article and then summarize it and then share it with the class. And so that ninth grader uh, liked to study about science and health and how the body works. So she went into the uh, on internet and found an, an article that says the effect come on. Uh -oh. The roots of a tree, uh, some kind of plant. I'm not sure what it is in English. But here it says that the root can heal cancer. And so this uh, ninth grader summarized the article very well done. And she took different resources and shared it in a very, very well manner. And her English was very fluent. But it was a, a regret that the, the, uh, the research that she did, the information she got was not true. Thank you. Uh, and so they see that in Canada, they had a survey like that. And uh, so Canada c could not uh, found out that there's no true evidence that the root can really cure cancer, only based on testimonies. There was this one man who was 74 years old. He had cancer, and the doctor said, just go home and spend time with your family and rest. And so the man went home and drank from that uh, root um, juice and was able to live very well. But if you go into that source, resource, um, they removed it because it wasn't truly it wasn't true. Why? But that young uh, ninth grader researched it, but had the false information. And so now uh, they say that, like the Wall Street Journal say, most students don't know when news is fake, Stanford study finds. So how do we know what is fake news and true news, real news? The Wall Street Journal had a Stanford study, 
and say that most students don't know when news is fake. They just hear the news and they think that is real. And now, uh, professors and teachers would say, uh, "Do not trust the internet." So we need to be careful. We need to discern what is real and what is fake, what is true and what is false. So the Word of God tells us that we are to apply our heart to instruction and our ear to words of knowledge. In Proverbs twenty three twelve, why is that? Because if you use false news or information, then it will then it will cause the wrong decision, right? If we have problems with our husband and your friends say to leave him, then that's a wrong decision. We need to be careful. That is the reason why Proverbs encourage us to apply your heart to instruction and your ear to words of knowledge. In contrast, if we seek advice from foolish people, people who say that, oh, I know everything, blind leading the blind, then to listen to them, we will face problems. They will look down on words of wisdom and may lead us in the wrong way, following the wrong advice, and even to follow lies. So therefore, we need to listen to words of wisdom. What is words of wisdom and instruction? It is the Word of God. So if anybody has any advice for us, let us examine it to see if it's according to God's Word. We need to open our hearts to receive God's instruction, the words that will bring us life, that will bring us freedom and guide our lives and bring us hope and life. Lord, where will we go? For you have the living word. So we need to hold on to Christ. And when we listen to the advice of people who those people know deeply the word of God, they live close towards God, God's word, and experience God, then that will be beneficial to us and we will receive instruction from the Lord. May the Lord help us through the lesson today that let us do all to build up our brothers and sisters, have the words of God in the right time, right place, and to submit to the word of God. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, have mercy upon us for we have so many sounds around us, many loud noises, many uh, advice, many philosophies, many uh, news articles that causes us confusion, and we don't know how to decide what is right. But Lord, thank you that you are full of kindness and wisdom, and you promise that you will not <clears throat> uh, cast us away when we come to you. Lord, help us to learn goodness in your word and your instructions so that help us Lord so that when we have advice for our brothers and sisters in our fellowship groups when we fellowship with one another that we will rely on the wisdom from heaven relying on the wisdom of your word so that we can encourage one another to grow in you father give grace to those who are parents so that we will have your grace in our words to use your words to build up and um, help our children. And Lord, help us, for we are very easy to stumble on our own words when we speak so much that we can cause a lot of sin. Help us, Lord, to be careful in our words. And Lord, help us that and protect and keep our mouths, Lord, so that the words that come from our mouths will glorify you and bring blessings to the hearer. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen.